Hello, Blender enthusiasts. I'm back again with another time-lapse video. And this time, I decided to try something a little different. Instead of tackling a large, expansive scene with multiple elements and a complex setup, I opted for something smaller and more intimate, a street pothole. It might sound mundane at first, but trust me, there's something magical about turning an everyday detail into a piece of art. I wanted to explore how even the smallest, overlooked parts of the world can carry texture, mood, and storytelling. For this project, I focused on recreating a pothole as it might look on a cold, rainy night, slowly filling with water from the rain. While working on it, my original intention was to utilize a variety of techniques to bring the scene to life. However, as the process unfolded, I found myself gravitating towards one particular tool, the displacement modifier. By the time I finished, I realized that about 90% of the results had been achieved using this single tool, making this project less of a general exploration and more of an accidental showcase of how powerful and versatile displacement can be. To give you some context, the idea behind the render was to highlight the interplay of light, texture, and atmosphere in a small, contained scene. There's something incredibly satisfying about crafting a puddle of rainwater surrounded by cracked asphalt, capturing the reflections, and imagining the chilly, damp air of a quiet street at night. Even though this is a relatively simple concept, the depth of detail you can achieve makes it feel much more than that. Now let's dive into the technical aspects. The first challenge was creating the base mesh for the pothole and ensuring it had enough resolution to hold all the detail that the displacement textures would add. When working with displacement, one of the key factors is ensuring that your mesh is well subdivided, as the detail from your textures directly depends on the density of your geometry. However, as many of you know, increasing the subdivision level too much can make your project unbearably heavy and difficult to work with, especially on lower-end hardware. To solve this problem, I used a technique often seen in game development, breaking the mesh into smaller sections. By dividing the mesh, I was able to assign higher subdivision levels to the faces that were closer to the camera, where the detail would be most visible, and lower subdivision levels to areas further away. This method not only optimized performance, but also allowed me to focus computational power where it mattered most. It's worth noting that in modern game engines, this kind of optimization is done dynamically as the camera moves. However, in Blender, we can achieve something similar manually by sectioning off meshes in advance, especially for projects involving large environments or intricate textures. Once the base mesh was ready, I moved on to setting up the displacement textures. For those unfamiliar with this workflow, displacement works by pushing and pulling the vertices of a mesh based on the brightness values of a texture, creating real geometry-based detail. Since most of the displacement I needed involved vertical movement up and down, I made sure to set the displacement axis to Z. This small adjustment is crucial because it ensures the texture deforms the mesh in the intended direction making it easier to control the result. One of the things I wanted to experiment with was layering multiple displacement textures to create a more dynamic and believable surface. I started with a base texture to generate the large cracks in the asphalt, which gave the scene its foundational structure. Then, I added a secondary displacement texture to introduce smaller details, such as the rough, uneven surface of the asphalt and tiny scattered rocks. This layering technique allowed me to build complexity gradually, giving the scene a more natural and organic feel. But there was another challenge, ensuring that the cracks in the asphalt appeared seamless across the different sections of the mesh. Because I had broken the mesh into smaller parts for optimization, it was essential to maintain continuity in the textures. To do this, I used object coordinates linked to an empty object that I created. By sharing these coordinates across all the sections, I was able to move, scale, and rotate the cracks uniformly, ensuring they looked consistent and cohesive throughout the scene. This approach gave me precise control over the placement and orientation of the cracks, which was especially helpful when fine-tuning the composition.
Another interesting aspect of this project was the materials. In the time lapse, you'll notice that I used nearly the same techniques for all the materials in the scene, but with slight variations to achieve different results. For example, the puddle itself required a glossy, reflective material to mimic the look of water, while the asphalt needed a rough, matte finish to contrast with the shine of the puddle. Even though the materials were relatively simple, the combination of displacement and thoughtful material work brought the scene to life. What I love about projects like this is how they demonstrate the versatility of Blender's tools. With just a few carefully chosen techniques, you can achieve a wide range of effects, from realistic textures to atmospheric lighting. Speaking of lighting, the scene's mood depended heavily on it. I went for a cold, rainy night vibe with soft, dim lighting to highlight the wet surface of the asphalt and the subtle reflections in the puddle. The interplay of light and shadow adds a sense of depth and realism, even in a small contained scene like this. In the end, I completed the render in about an hour and a half, which included everything from modeling to texturing and lighting. While the workflow was straightforward, the results show how much you can achieve with a focused approach and the right tools. This time lapse is packed with tips and techniques that I think anyone can pick up and adapt to their own projects, especially if you're interested in materials, displacement, and texture workflows. So sit back, enjoy the video, and let me know what you think.